Bill Burns, David Cohen, great choices for the CIA uh, to uh, restore morale within that agency. Go, Mom, well Dad. Diamond. Go, Dad, Dad. Go. And, uh, and in terms of Director Ray, I give the director enormous credit. I'm glad the president uh, is keeping. Hello, up. how are you? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, your microphone is not on. Destiny. Hello, Prophetess. Hi, how are you? I'm blessed. How are you, Queen? I'm doing good, thank you. <laughs> That's good. You're welcome. Um, a quick question. So that um, I know that I missed the last two classes. Is it possible if I can turn in my late work when I get to on top of it and send it over to you via email? Yeah, you can. Um, the only thing that's due is the um the purity covenant that needs to be signed. Everything else, um, there's only two, there's only three things that need to be done this semester. One is the purity covenant, and then the other two assignments, that's the, that doesn't come until the end, which is the summary um, assignment um, for each class and also the um, final exam. Okay, cool. And um, I never received my grade for our last semester. Um, I emailed that to you. Um, let me look to see when I did that. Hold on. I emailed it to you on the 31st. Okay, let me go in my emails and then I'll pull it up. Thank you, Queen. Oh, you're welcome. No problem. And then also, I didn't get a chance to call you um, about your question about the um, the semester. So it's, so each semester is just $100. Um, did you, was you sponsored last time? Yeah. Yes, I was sponsored, and that's why I wanted to ask you, you know, was I going to be sponsored again, you know, because due to the financial situation, what's going on right now? Mm -hmm. Um, I I will look into that. Um, let me check. To I'll let you know for sure. Um, there was. I got to see if there's any sponsors this semester. I didn't really inquire. Um about that because um, I haven't, you know, nobody uh, asked me about it. So I didn't even inquire to anyone, but um, I can find out for you. If not, we can, um, we'll work something out. So we could talk offline. I have other students coming in. So let me check, let me find out about the sponsorship first and then we have touch base. Okay, cool, thank you. You're welcome. Praise the Lord, First Lady Walker. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Good. Doing good. good. I've, I've been saying, I was like, I need to give you a call. And then, oh my God. And Oh, yeah. And then You've afterwards, I don't even get a chance to call. So help, you know. <sighs> Maybe this weekend we can chit chat. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. Okay, let me send these messages out to see where everyone is. One moment. Okay. Now, I don't have the, um, I'm not on there yet. I'm still on the, you know, join audio, share screen, invite others. 
Okay. Hello. Hello, Hello. Apostle Deppy. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> How are you? Wonderful. Trying to get it together. Me too. Let me see. It's good seeing you, darling. I'm doing <laughs> good seeing you too. Hi, Destiny. Hey, blessings. How are you doing today, Queen? You too. Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for asking. I'm glad you joined us this session. Yes, I could not miss it. Good. Good. It's been good. I'm sad for those who haven't gotten back in with us. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm excited. Did everybody experience the release yesterday? <laughs> Amen. There was a release. The Amen. Of yes, it did. It really did. I it felt that in the atmosphere. Oh yes. my goodness. Yes. So you should be experiencing some some a uh, liberty. And yes. Some peace. Amen. So, great things are getting ready to happen in our lives. Amen. Amen. I felt the atmosphere change tremendously. Yes. yes, it was. Bless you guys. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we rejoice and we're glad in it. We thank you that this is all you're doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We thank you, God, that you are God, and beside you, there is no other God. We thank you, Lord. Because in you we live and move and have our being. Lord, we come before you. Come on, let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's begin to stir ourselves up. Let's pray. 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 let us if you hear anything as you're praying in the in the chat section if you hear anything while we're praying in tongues, put it in the chat section. The Holy Ghost is the source of miracles. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Share it in your body. Share it in your body. Share it in your body. Thank you, Jesus. Share it in your Thank you, Jesus. Share it in your body. 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 Father, we thank you for Holy Spirit peace. Hallelujah. We thank you for Holy Spirit peace. We thank you. I, I keep hearing, hallelujah, the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. Yeah, I don't know who that's for. Hallelujah. But in, in, in addition to Holy Spirit peace, hallelujah, I declare the mercies of God be upon you. The mercies of God, the mercy, the mercies, the mercies of God, the mercies of God endure forever. Mm. Jesus. I declare in the name of the Lord, uh, hallelujah, the, the anointing of mercy, hallelujah, be upon you. The anointing of mercy be upon you. Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. Come on, a few more minutes. Pray in the Holy Ghost until you know what to say in English. Father, we thank you that miracles are bestowed upon your people and and greatness lies ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, yes, God, we declare, hallelujah, that you are doing a new thing. Yes. That you are doing a new thing. Miracles uh, are being released and greatness lies ahead and you are doing a new thing. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, God. Hallelujah. That you carry us through every trial. Hallelujah. You carry yes. us through every persecution that comes our way. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that it's for your glory and it's for your honor. Come on, a few more minutes. Come on, a few more minutes in the Holy Ghost. Let the miracles of God be stirred up within you. Your miracle is in your mouth. Your miracle is in your mouth. Go ahead, go ahead, stir up the Holy Ghost within you. Miracle 
is in your mouth. Miracle is in your mouth. Hallelujah. Yes. Your miracle is in your mouth. In the name of Jesus. Anybody else get anything? Strength to soar on wings like an eagle. Father, we declare strength to soar on wings like an eagle. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for strength to soar on wings like an eagle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Abba, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works than these shall he do. Hallelujah. Because I go to my Father. Yes, Lord, we receive that. We enter into that. We believe that. We agree with that. We enter into that. Hallelujah. We agree with that. We believe that. We believe that greater works than these shall we do. Hallelujah. Because you go to the Father and you send back the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because you go to the Father and you send back the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I, I, felt, I felt the Holy Spirit say to put up the background of Israel, uh, this one, because to the left is where, listen, 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 get this, to the left, uh, over, uh, you know, about three or 400 yards from that dome of the rock is where the Holy Ghost was outpoured in the earth for the first time. Jesus. <laughs> Listen, the Holy Spirit, <laughs> the miraculous one, the dunamis power from whence comes all miracles was poured out in the earth on his church just to the left about four or five hundred yards from that dome of the rock in a in a place called the upper room wow in a place called the upper room it, listen it it is imperative that you realize for miracle signs and wonders to be your portion and for you 
to operate in the uh, John 14, 12 scripture that God that prompted somebody who, who just put that in the comments section, uh, that greater work shall these, uh, shall these uh, will you do uh, because I go to my father. It is imperative that you realize that this anointing for the miraculous has an actual earthly locale. In other words, he walked the earth, he left his spirit, he sent his spirit and left it in the earth, and it's still in the earth, and the very source of the Holy Spirit yet still has an earthly address. Hallelujah. The very source of the Holy Spirit yet still has an earthly address. Wow. And there is nothing like going to the source of anything. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and, and in the earth, that source is Israel, the city of Jerusalem. And it is, it is imperative uh, that we know the actual uh, uh, pattern or blueprint for miracles. It, it is imperative uh, that we know. I told you last week that the word for power in Acts 1 and 8, when it says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. That word uh, in the original Greek for power is the Greek word dunamis. And it is where we get our English word dynamite. Right. And it is the source of miracles. Miracles in scripture is also that same Greek word dunamis. And, and, and so, uh, when we receive the power of the Holy Ghost, we, we receive the miraculous. The miraculous lives on the inside of us. Amen. Hallelujah. The Amen. miraculous one lives on the inside of us. Oh. And so... And so it's important that we realize that. Now, I, I spent two weeks laying out for you the reason why we don't see more miracles like the disciples saw fresh from that upper room to your to the left of that dome like the disciples saw fresh from that upper room well what was the uh outstanding characteristic of Miracles happening in the book of Acts. I see two hands. I think I I yeah. seen uh -huh. Michelle's hand first, oh but Bessie, Bessie and Michelle kind of simultaneously raised yeah. their hand. What what was it? What was it? It was it was prayer, power, authority, faith, and praise. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of prayer, Michelle? Corporate prayer. Corporate <laughs> prayer. Amen. Corporate prayer. That's what's missing. That's what's missing. <laughs> in the church of this generation. Amen. That that also is is uh, connected to why miracles are not commonplace to the church of this generation. Mm. Corporate prayer was a lifestyle, and it was a, a, a characteristic of the early church. It was, <laughs> it was a lifestyle, and it was, it was a part of the DNA of the early church, uh, of the Acts church. Actually, the fourfold uh, principles of apostolic 
uh, uh, presentation in the apostolic church in the book of Acts, the second chapter, the 42nd verse says, they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, breaking of bread, fellowship, and prayer. Yeah. They continued in that fourfold uh, uh, characteristic of the apostles' doctrine, uh, fellowship, breaking of bread, and prayer. All four of them are vital if you're going to operate in miracles. Fellowship, breaking of bread. Uh, and corporate prayer makes you one. And how many know? How many know you're pressing to miracles more for the one that you are connected to? Mm -hmm. You will, you will press into miracles when miracles are needed uh, more for the one that you are connected to. If you're disconnected from something or somebody, the passion, the, 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 the fervency in prayer often is at a low level. Yeah. When Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, he raised him from the dead out of the fact that uh, uh, it's stated in, in, in John 11 uh, uh, that uh, would, could not this one that, 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 that uh, if he was here would have raised his, uh, uh, his friend from the dead. And, 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 and the Bible said he wept when he came before uh, uh, Lazarus' grave. And the scripture says the people said, uh, look how he loved him. Amen. Look how much he loved him. There's something to uh, uh, pressing in for, for someone that you are connected to. And, and fellowship, prayer, and breaking of bread deals with a connection or a unity that causes you to be one with the people that you are fellowshipping with, breaking bread, and praying with. Now, the fourth principle, the apostles' doctrine, deals with those six principles that we actually laid out to you in the last quarter that uh, uh, of the, the first principles of the doctrine uh, that, that have uh, uh, laying on of hands, raising the dead, the judgments, the uh, faith, uh, baptisms with, uh, with the water, spirit, and fire, uh, uh, repentance from dead works, the, the apostles' doctrine, you put that together with fellowship, prayer, and breaking of bread with a group of people that you're connected to, and let some devil try to uh, afflict their bodies. Let some devil try to uh, uh, bring upon them premature death. A out of your spirit will rise. Uh, that dunamis power that will call them back from sickness, disease, and, and, and death without even thinking, bypassing your mental reasoning, Go, going deep down into your spirit, but until we until we return to these vital parts of the DNA of the Acts Church, we won't see the miracles like we saw yeah. in the Book of Acts. And and, and it is it is vitally important uh, that we we do this and we understand this uh, to to actually press in. So so tonight I want to I want to deal with uh the miracles that come from prayer, miracles of prayer and of deliverance in, in the book of Joel and, and and we're going to deal with uh uh what deliverance the miracles of prayer and deliverance looks like, and again, 
<laughs> if you look to Joel 232, uh, you'll see that it it has its origin and has its genesis in, in a solemn assembly of prayer. Let's look at it. Joel 2, 32. Joel 2, 32. Joel 2, 32. When you have it, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, let's go. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape. As the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Okay, so verse 32 is a very familiar scripture. How many have heard? And it will come about that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. I've got to get my grandson out front, I'll be back. Okay. Who is iPhone? Betsy. Mother Betsy. Okay. Apostle, was that Joel 232? Joel. Joel. Oh, Joel. Oh, okay. I'm like, there is no Job 232. <laughs> I did the same thing, then I realized he uh, he was probably referring to Joel. Oh, Joel. <laughs> Joel. Okay. All right, sorry. Joel 232. Got it now, sir. Okay, now I'm good. All right, let's look at that again then. Let's read that again. Good. And it will come about that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be delivered. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape. As the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Now, uh, I said this and I'll say it again. Uh, how many have heard of that verse 32? It will come a pass, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. You might have heard it, uh, uh, whosoever calls on the Lord, name of the Lord shall be saved. It's important that we understand biblical terms in the context of biblical scripture and not in the context of our religious upbringing or our religious tradition. So if most people read that 32nd verse, and especially if you read it in the Acts, in Acts's version, Acts 2, uh, 2, 17, 22 through 22, uh, you would think, how many would think if you read Acts, Acts version of, uh, of Joel 2.32, uh, where it says, uh, and, and it shall come to pass, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, that you would think of an altar call. <laughs> be honest. Be honest. Because you hear that in church as connected to an altar call. This is not talking about an altar call, y'all. Right. <laughs> Right. This is not talking about uh, 
call him the name Yeshua or Jesus to be saved from your sins. It's not talking about that. Joel 2.32 is talking about deliverance and particularly the type of deliverance that it's talking about is uh, it is articulated in uh, the further down in that same verse, the 32nd verse, uh, when it says, there will be those who escape. Now, who has another ver version of that 32nd verse? Uh, it says, but on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape. On the New King James, it says, uh, there shall be deliverance. There shall be deliverance. Go ahead. As the Lord has said, among the As remnants the whom the Lord calls. In the remnant who the Lord calls. Uh, any other uh, ver versions of that same verse? I'm reading out of the, the NASB. So the the deliverance that he's talking about is talking it's connected to escaping or surviving something now what is joel talking about escaping or surviving I does anybody have, know um, i have a different version too go um, ahead destiny read it um, Joel 2, 28 through 32, it says in the new message version, and that's just the beginning after that. I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, prophecy, also your daughters, your old men will dream, your young men will see visions. I'll even pour out my spirit on the servants, men and women both. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and blowing smoke the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the judgment day of god the day tremendous and awesome whoever calls help god gets help on mount zion and in jerusalem there will be a great rescue just as god said included in the survivors are those that call that god calls okay so destiny's version it calls this a great rescue. A great rescue. What is what 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 are what are they being rescued from, y'all? What are they being rescued? Destiny just read it in her version. Uh, in our version. In my version, it's in verse 31 that they're being rescued from. What is it called that they're being rescued from? Tribulations, the last tribulations. Tribulation, anybody else? Darkness. Darkness, anybody else? The rapture, ready for the rapture. No. Um, it calls it in verse 31, what they're being rescued from. It says the sun will be turned to darkness, the moon to blood before what? The great and terrible day. Yeah. The great and terrible day of the Lord comes in, in, in the ver version that destiny read, uh, it's, it says it begins with the judgment of the great and terrible day. What, read it again, Destiny, that part, that part, just don't, in the verse 31. Okay. Um, okay, I will pour out my spirit. You got to mute your phone, Bessie. Okay, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters, your old men will dream, your young men will see visions. I'll even pour out my spirit on the servants, man and woman both. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and blowing smoke. 
the sun turning black in the moon blood red before the judgment day of God, the day Please. tremendous and awesome. Whoever calls help God gets help. Okay, before the judgment day of God. Before the judgment day of God. So, so uh, what version is that, Destiny? The new message. The new message version. So the new mes message version calls the great and terrible day of the Lord the great judgment day of God. Yeah. And that great judgment day of God is called different things in Scripture. Uh, 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 Jeremiah 36 calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, the New Covenant calls it in book of the book of Matthew and the book of the Revelation the Great Tribulation. Uh, Carol spoke okay. of it when when she when I asked uh, what what this day was. Okay. What are they being delivered from? What are they being spared from? What are they being uh, rescued from? They're being rescued, spared, delivered from the judgment day of God. Yeah, man. The, the great and terrible day of the Lord. The, 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 listen, y'all. What we have thought about these verses of scripture have been uh, somewhat um, diluted and um, compromised and minimized. We, when we, when we read these verses of scripture about uh, the Holy Spirit pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh, sons and daughters prophesy, young men dreaming dreams, old men seeing visions. Uh, upon my handmaiden son, I, I, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. We stop right there, especially in Pentecost and charismatic circles. We stop right there. But the verse of scripture goes on to speak of what the Holy Spirit being poured out on all flesh is for. It's to prepare his people to miss the mess. It's to prepare his people to be spared and delivered and rescued from the judgment of the great and terrible day of the Lord, where God will come and purge the earth of sin and wickedness in preparation for the return of his son and his kingdom in the earth. Now, how are God's people at the end of the age going to be spared, delivered, and rescued from the judgment of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Can anybody tell me? How are we going to be spared if we're alive at that, at that time? How are the generation of the Lord's return going to be spared? Whoever is alive at the time of the great and terrible day of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord in the earth, how are they going to be spared? We have to call the upon the rescue. Lord. What but is being what, saved? We have that, to call huh? upon the Lord. Okay, so we got to get we've got to get specific because that's the the uh, the general. That's the general expression of it. That's the answer generally. But remember, I told y'all when we think of they that call upon the Lord shall be delivered. We think of coming down to an altar and giving our hearts to Jesus. Ooh. That's not what this verse is talking about. So what does it mean, according to these, this verse in this chapter, uh, to call on the name of the Lord? What is it particularly, specifically speaking of? Go ahead, Latanya. Is it for forgiveness of our sins? Nope, nope. No. 
not for forgiveness of sin. What does it mean to call on the name of the Lord in the context of this particular scripture? Now, the context is the verses above and beneath. So if you want to know the answer. For the prophetic gifts. Any, huh? For the prophetic gifts. No, no, no. Not just, <laughs> not just the verse. So you got to go all the way back to the first verse and sometimes to the uh, first chapter in a book when you want to know the context. So what kind of prayer is it speaking of at the beginning or what kind of uh, 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 calling on the name of the Lord? What is that? It, it goes, goes all, go all the way back to verse one of chapter Prayer and two. spirit. Go all the way back to verse one of chapter two. Brandon, is it prayer and spirit? Nope, nope. Let's look, look at it. Verse one. Are you there? Jo Sound Job the alarm. Two. Huh? Sound the alarm. It's, that's got to do with corporate prayer. It's got to do with corporate prayer. <laughs> no, Michelle. <laughs> Listen, look at it. Blow a trumpet in Zion mm -hmm. and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Amen. Let all the Trump, let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. Mm. Surely it is near. That's, that's, we found out just a few minutes ago, that's talking about the judgment day. The judgment day of God is coming. Right. He's saying, surely it's near. And then look at, uh, look at it again. Uh, it says it again in verse, I believe it's 15, and it spells out what the trumpet is being blown for. Blow a trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Proclaim a what? Sacred assembly. A sacred, assembly. solemn yeah. assembly. Gather the people. Gather, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom come out of his room and the bride out of her bridal chamber. Let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say what? Have mercy, God, on your people. What is your say, Destiny? Have mercy, wait, it says, Have let mercy, them God, on your people. Have mercy, God, on your people. Don't abandon your heritage to contempt. Listen, listen, my, my version says it's similar. My version says, let the people say that come together in the solemn assembly of prayer, let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Mine. Mm -hmm. More, M Michelle, is that what yours says? Mine says, have pity on your people, Lord. Have pity on your people. Do not so, let your inheritance a disgrace. And do not let your inheritance be a disgrace. Listen, this calling on the name of the Lord is talking about a prayer meeting. Amen. It's not talking about uh, 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 an altar call. They that call upon the name of the Lord. See, in that day when the judgment time for God to enact judgment upon the earth, what is the only answer for God's people during that day of judgment? Prayer, corporate prayer. Corporate prayer, that's it, Latanya. Corporate prayer <laughs> or solemn assemblies of prayer. Listen, that's the only rapture there's going to be. <laughs> a solemn assembly of prayer, a gathering of prayer. There will be miracles of deliverance. What is... What is the miracles of prayer and deliverance for? What are the miracles of prayer and deliverance for? 
Say it, say it, Latanya. The people. Whose people? God's, God's people. people. The deliverance or the miracles of prayer and deliverance are for God's people that will be in the earth during the time of God's judgments on the earth. Hmm. The miracles of prayer and deliverance, or the miracles of prayer, the prayers of deliverance, will be for God's people that are in the earth during the time of God's judgments that will be in the earth. Now, who knows? in scripture where God's judgments were on a region and God's people were spared from the judgments. Who knows in scripture where God's judgments were released on a region and on a nation, but God's people were spared from that judgment. Who knows where that, where that is? In Solomon, Solomon and Gomorrah? Sodom and Gomorrah, that, 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 that was one. Who knows another? Where God's judgments were, were pronounced and released on a region and God's people were spared from that judgment. Egypt. Egypt. Both places, Egypt, and Sodom and Gomorrah, God's people were spared from the judgment. And there it is, Bessie put it down, the flood with Noah. The flood with Noah. And what was the common what was the common denominator in all three their belief in their their belief in their prayers their belief in their prayers or corporate gatherings corporate gatherings where god's people came together believed the man of God and prayed that God would have mercy on them. In the ark, God's people, the eight that were saved, believed the man of God, Noah, and they prepared an ark for their salvation. They came into a corporate gathering of safety in that ark. In Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot, his wife, his two daughters, there's another group of more than two or three, two or three, but that corporate gathering is, is is, is two or three or more gathered together in his name. Wasn't there it when those know, three gentlemen got spared from the fire too? Say it again. The three gentlemen that got spared from the fire too that was inside of the fire? Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, that, that, that could be a, uh, that could be a uh, example also. Yeah. So what my, my point is, my point is that, that God is going to spare his people through corporate gatherings of prayer to be delivered from the judgment that will be released in the earth upon his people, uh, uh, you know, upon the earth. And it's important that we recognize what 
is the um, hope and what is the actual, uh, well, I'll just say the hope of the judgments that will be released on, on the earth, the hope of his people and, and the actual uh, answer to being covered, kept, and delivered is corporate prayer. And there will be miracles of deliverance. In the book of Egypt, I mean, in the book of Exodus, the, uh, what was the miracle of deliverance? Who can name a miracle of deliverance for God's people in, in the book of Exodus with God bringing his people out of Egypt? Who can name a miracle of deliverance? Who can recall a miracle of deliverance from, uh, from Exodus uh, of God's people being uh, delivered out of Egypt. Going through the Red Sea on dry ground. Going through the Red Sea on dry ground. Who can name another miracle of deliverance? In, in the book of Exodus. The defeat of Amalek. The defeat of Amalek. Who can name another miracle of deliverance of God's people in the book of Exodus? When he spiked the rock, the water came out. Smite, smite, when he smote the rock, uh, the water came out. Who can name another uh, example of deliverance of God's people in the book of Exodus? He gave um, them food. Um, fire by, let me see, fire, by fire, night. fire to lead them by, by night, yes, cloud man. to lead them by day. That was a miracle of deliverance. Uh, another miracle of deliverance when, when he actually spared the firstborn of the Egyptians through it. the blood applied to the doorposts of the house of the uh, uh, the, the Israelites. He spared the firstborn of the Israelites, killing the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Right. Firstborn. But 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 spared the firstborn of the Israelites through the blood that was applied to the oh, doorposts the door. and the lamb that they ate. Mm -hmm. And the quail and the man. These are examples of miracles of deliverance. That will again at the end of the age be prominent and that will again be, be, be commonplace. Right now, right now we, we, don't, we don't recognize, we don't recognize these miracles of deliverance in the in, 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 in the children of e Israel's day coming out of Egypt as commonplace miracle. How many people came out of Egypt? Does anybody know? So, so the scripture 70? says... 67 or 70, I think. No, no, no. How oh, no, no, I'm getting mixed up. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about how many went into Egypt. Yes, 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 sorry. <laughs> how many came out of Egypt uh, of the Israelites when they when God delivered them? So so counting 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 children, counting women and children, there was upwards to 2 million people. How many how many of you live in a city that has upwards to 2 million people? I live in a city that has around 1.6 million, 2 million people. So for God to deliver the children of Israel and, and, and all of the Israelites being spared the judgments of 
the Egyptians, firstborn, their cattle killed, you know, the, the lice, the locusts, uh, the river being turned to blood. Listen, it would be like you living in a city of 1,600,000 people and God sparing your city, but the next door city of, say, my next door city would be Cleveland or Cincinnati. Everybody's firstborn in Cincinnati was, was killed, but the firstborn in my city, Columbus, Ohio, was spared. That's what is that's that's the that's what it is like. Now, what was the difference between the firstborn being spared in Columbus or in e in e Egypt of the Israelites and the firstborn in Egypt being killed? The difference was a prayer meeting. The Passover was a solemn assembly of prayer where God gave them to take a communion meal, eat of his flesh, the lamb, and apply the blood to the doorposts of the house. It's a, it's a solemn assembly. It's a prayer gathering. It's a prayer meeting. So it would be like Columbus being a city of prayer and the, the, the 1.6 million people are coming together uh, uh, to pray in their houses or to pray in stadiums around the clock and Cincinnati saying, oh, that ain't necessary. Mm. Oh, uh, we don't need to do that. We go to church on Sunday. We don't, we don't need to have prayer meetings. After all, we have jobs. We have places we need to go. We have to get up in the morning. We can't stay up all night eating a lamb and putting blood on the uh -huh. doorpost. We got to get up and go to work in the morning. <laughs> He told them what to do, and they did it, and they were spared. Amen. At the end of the age, cities are going to be spared the judgment, and cities are going to experience the brunt of the judgment. As you, you, you could see it this year or, or last year. What city experienced the brunt of COVID-19 deaths? New York. New York City. What city a year before COVID-19 legalized abortion to the full term of a mother's pregnancy? Was that New York, sir? New York. Wow. wow. My God. I, I said, and, and, and you, could, you could go to my page and see this. I said the day after New York legalized abortion up to the ninth month, I was in prayer, and the Holy Ghost said to me, I'm going to answer the death decree in New York with my wow. own death decree. Wow. And I, paid, and I posted it on my page with a black background. You know, those, those colorful mm -hmm. backgrounds. I, I said, God said he's going to answer mm -hmm. the death decree of, of New York with his own death decree. Mm -hmm. Do you know a year to the day that's when COVID hit rampant in New York City? I'm yeah. talking rampant. What am I telling you? 
There will be cities that will experience the brunt of the judgments of God wow. at the end of the age. And the difference in those cities will be those that gather in obedience to God and stand in prayer against those things that are going on in the region or in the nation and those that are not coming together in prayer and standing against the judgments of God. COVID-19 was a judgment from God. Mm -hmm. I, I, I read it in January wow. of 2020. I read it on a prayer line. Isaiah 26, 20. And it was before COVID-19 hit. This is what God told me about 2020. In January, this, this, this month, a year ago, January the 6th, I have it marked down in my Bible. January the 6th, 2020, verse 20. Come, my people, enter into my chamber and close your doors behind you and hide for a little while until indignation runs its course. For behold, the Lord is about to come from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. Wow. And the earth will reveal her bloodshed, and will no more cover her slain. I shared these verses on a prayer live at 6 in the morning, uh, January the 6th, 2020, and I said, these are days for solemn assemblies of prayer. Amen. And I started hosting Seven day solemn assemblies of prayer online the first seven days of the month. And God told me, He said, whatever happens in 2020, at this time, I didn't know what COVID 19 was. It hadn't, it hadn't really hit America yet. But God told me, he said, whatever happens in 2020, he said, if my people will gather together in solemn assemblies of prayer, it will pass over them. Mm -hmm. Wow. It will pass over them. And in those solemn assemblies of prayer, that's when God gave me how to pray uh, in the month of March, I believe he gave me how to pray against COVID-19. And that's when it, 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 it really began hitting in February, March. In one of the solemn assemblies of prayer, the seven day solemn assembly of prayer in March is when it really began hitting. And God gave me the prayer that I've shared with you guys uh, uh, that, that have, uh, either had uh, COVID or your family members that had COVID, that prayer he gave me in one of the solemn assemblies of prayer, and he said, pray it over anybody that attracts this, uh, this virus. I will cover them. I will heal them. I will, I will deliver them. And, and, and he said, and he said, and those that enter into the solemn assemblies of prayer, I will keep them from it. Amen. I will keep them from it. Amen. My family all year, he kept us from it. Amen. And those that caught it that might not have gone through the solemn assembly of prayer with us, uh, when I sent it to them to pray it, he healed them. Hallelujah. Amen. He healed them because that prayer came out of the solemn assembly of prayer. 
And solemn assemblies of prayer are the answer to judgment in the land. It's what covers and keeps and delivers his people from the judgment in the land. I'm gonna tell you, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, give you a a five minute break, and then we're gonna come back and talk about ways that we can uh, miss the mess through solemn assemblies of prayer and examples of how God has kept you and covered you by being connected with a corporate gathering. Of, of his body in prayer and worship. All right, everybody take about a five minute break. Enough, your children are coming home. And I, ah. I had to stand on that, no matter what it looked like, no matter the situation, you know, I had, um, it was a time where um, at the maybe like 2018, you know, somewhere around there, it's 2017, 2018, where I thought I was gonna have relief right there, but the enemy was still trying to hold on and uh, preventing me, even though I had gained my rights back, he was still preventing me from receiving my rights. So yeah. that was a hard, um, um, you know, trial that I went through, a hurdle, but, but God. <laughs> Amen. But God, I have my hey, I have them. You know, I want custody of them. Um, and they're here. <laughs> they're here right now, upstairs, actually. So <laughs> awesome. God's glory. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> they that call on the name of the Lord shall yes. be there. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Miss Bessie. Yes. Bessie, you there? All right, Bessie's not there. Prophetess Shatisha Williams. I think she's there. We can't hear her. Betsy, you're on. Be quiet. Okay, uh, go can ahead. Can you hear me? Okay, we hear you now. Okay, I'm trying to return back to my video, but I'm having trouble. Uh, but... Um, Yes, Shatisha I just can, wanted to thank Shatisha God because you back in. Uh, every time that uh, we're in an accident, we're a miracle sign and a wonder, and I thank God for that. And back in 2000, I had a gallbladder operation, and the doctor said, oh, in a couple of days, you'll be able to go back to work. Six weeks later, I was still in a lot of pain, but I returned back to work because my body was re um, was. Um, rejecting a stent that I had in my stomach to drain all the bile. Uh, so uh, main thing was I ended up back in the hospital and with the second uh, procedure and um, the bile could have killed me, but God said, no devil, back up. I've got you. And the prayers I know work because, um, you know, um, I, at the time I was going to World Harvest Church and um, once a day someone would come in and pray with me and um, mm. and that was powerful. And, yeah. Um, so in, in, it, on top was of it that, a Was it a gentleman or a, or a female? Both. Is it Ed, Ed McKee? Ed McKee was there and so was uh, Brad and Linda um, Brad and Linda Kreider. Okay, awesome. And uh, uh, which I had knew, I had uh, known them from Briggsville Baptist. Um, and um, so um, then I had uh, come to Freedom Rain, and um, only God knew what I was going to be facing. And um, my husband um, died, and um, it was 
a really quick thing that happened. It I wasn't uh, ex something Alex expected. I need to find my Alex last night with that. Uh, but anyways, I'm so sorry. Uh, but uh, right? the prayers of the church, uh, I and staying connected with them and um, Mother Apostle the uh, Creek calling me and and saying, "How's your day? Are you okay?" and things like that, and just uh, lifting me up in my prayers and showing their love. Amen. Amen. Oh, that is awesome. Awesome, Bessie. That is definitely those that call on the name of the Lord shall be spared. And Amen. also, too, whenever someone has to be, go to court or something like that, always remember that Jehovah Hashapit is the Lord, our judge, and he's always present. I've been uh, on BWC since November of 2015 in you know, they tried to tell me I had to return back to work. Um, in, in like in a week, they tried to tell me I had to come back to go back to work, and that was November of 2015. And I'm still on BWC, but God's just providing. You know, um, ah, and um, He Jesus. is our provider. And every time I have to go to a uh, BWC doctor or have to go to a BWC industrial commission hearing. God is with, with me every time. And I thank God because he is, he is my uh, healer. He's my provider and he's my judge. He's my everything. And I thank God because through uh, like, just like you said tonight through Christ, we can do all, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And yeah. I just thank God because of the strength that he gives us. And uh, one thing about uh, that I have noticed a lot with is when we're praising God and you, you were talking about fellowshipping corporate prayer and also corporate praising God is a powerful thing too, because when we're praising God, we're also praying Sometimes when we're praising, we start speaking in tongues instead of, you know, um, so, I mean, sometimes it, it's, it, it's when we're praising, we're also praying. So yeah. it's just so powerful. And I thank God yeah. for the, the people that have, I thank God for the ones that God has uh, placed in my life and, uh, just like with you and your faithfulness and the books that you've wrote, that's an inspiration to me. Um, Thank you. And, uh, you know, just to, and, and your love for God and to uh, have a heart for people and not only in our country, but in other countries. And uh, like, the, uh, uh, like I have uh, seen uh, dancers like uh, Sister Michelle and uh, Apostle, uh, Daphine, uh, where she, where they uh, worship God and praise God, and that was just so p powerful at the manifest in me uh, tunnel, that prayer tunnel, because they wasn't sure exactly how they were going to do it because of the coronavirus, and they wanted to have proper distancing. But it, God worked it all out, and it was it was just supernatural, supernatural. It was an amazing thing, and I thank God for His presence because. Uh, if just all the people that's on drugs would just realize being in God's presence is better than being on drugs or anything. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. God bless you, Bessie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. You're welcome. Prophetess Shatisha Williams, the well, manifest in me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um, blessed to hear the testimonies um, of the saints, you know, amen. Yeah. Um, amen. So truly, they overcome um, by the blood of the land and by the word of their testimonies. So we yeah. just thank God for um, the testimonies of the saints. I'm just encouraged, you know, just to hear um everyone's um and i'm sure there's dozens upon dozens upon dozens of testimonies yeah. <laughs> of God's yeah. grace and his yes, grace yes, and his mercy yes. um that he has shown upon all of us um um so just to pick one of them you know um just 
how you were saying about what, you know, miracle or blessing came out of uh, corporate prayer. I just thought about the miracle that came out of um, um, the body of Christ by even purchasing uh, Fresh Start Now building Mm. Uh, off of Thornville in Thornville, Ohio. Jesus. Yeah. You, um, hallelujah. You know, that was a faith walk. We went in and offered um, a contract, bid it on a contract, got the contract. Didn't have not one cent to go towards the contract. You know, mm. didn't have no money <laughs> to buy it, but we just bought it and, um, and you know, went into contract and forgot about it really and just went on to our daily day business and eventually they started calling us the sheriff started calling us and said if you don't come and finish this uh, process we're gonna um release the release the um contract you know we could prosecute you <laughs> first of all, i didn't know what the prosecution was about but anyway maybe they, because they felt like we wasn't coming to get the to buy the property but anyway uh so we was like okay i guess we need to start thinking about this so we started you know thinking about getting loans and all this stuff but then uh jesus the miraculous one you know Ooh. a man of god in our path to uh help us raise the money in 18 days and we was able jesus. to purchase it cash and um now we're in the renovation stage we uh raising money for that and um just thank God of of his goodness. So uh, that's what I wanted to share. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that, that just encouraged the, the socks Hallelujah. off of me. <laughs> right. Totally debt free. Totally debt free. Amen. Oh, you, Hallelujah. You just, blessed, you just blessed me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. That uh, that is definitely those that call on the name of the Lord shall be rescued. Amen. Amen. All right, whose iPad in the in the right lower left, uh, right hand corner? That's that, our. That be that, me. <laughs> that's mother. All Thank right, you. happy birthday, mother. Oh, God bless you. Thank you, Apostle. Um. Well, like my daughter said, there's many, 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 many. Um, one is, uh, I will make it short, um, going on nine years ago. Well, matter of fact, before then, I, my desire was to um, have a home and to um, have a house um, and me... Um, the type of house that I wanted, uh, I wanted to have a house built and built the way that I wanted it. So I, I, the Lord blessed me to um, get in touch with my daughter, uh, which at that time, 10 years ago, she was working for Beezer Home. And so I, I wanted a house in upstate New York because I wanted to be in New York. I was pastoring at that time in Brooklyn and um so and the lord blessed in that i only had to pay twenty five hundred dollars down for a uh, 1.2 acres um 17 rooms mm. um and and they built it for me mm. but it was on it was by the favor of my daughter because they didn't know me from adam or eve but they knew Tisha, so the Lord um, bless. I guess. Well, matter of fact, I know He was teaching me faith. Yeah, He was teaching me faith, and that home was built um, by faith. Although to learn, maybe about a year later, or maybe two years later, it wasn't for me. Um, my daughter told me. No, mom, you come to Ohio. I want you to come to Ohio. I want you to live in Ohio. I said, well, she said, I could uh, have, you know, home built here for you. I said, okay, I will use that for my vacation home. So when I, <laughs> <laughs> so when I come to um, Dominion Camp Meeting, 
because I was, uh, at that point, I was uh, Ministry of Fellowship, uh, a pastor on, on the Ministry of Fellowship at World Harvest. I said, I would use this for the saints, all of the saints in Brooklyn, whenever they have a vacation, they could come here. But it wasn't God's will. It was not his will. And um, so when I got in touch with the people um, in upstate and told them that I won't be, um, you know, I won't be moving there. But in any case, to make a long story short, uh, going on nine years now, I've been uh, here in Ohio, uh, a beautiful home built yes. from the way I wanted it <laughs> uh, to yes. my Tisha. And uh, I have no regrets. I moved here from New York going on nine years ago, and there are no regrets. And um, I was sitting in my family room here um, about five, about, mm, five months after I moved here, I was sitting in the living, in the family room, but sort of feeling a little sad because I came across the pictures of the house in New York, right? So um, I said, wow, I was feeling sad. And I, and the Lord spoke to me. He said, that house in New York was your will. He said, but now you're living in my will. Oh. When he told me that, that was the end of that. I got up and I'm still getting up and still, you know. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So, that, that's three minutes. Two years ago, um, I was having problems with my thyroid. And uh, one was overactive and it was big. And um, they took the biopsy and it came back and they wasn't sure. Uh, so they had to send it out and they sent it to California for them to, um, you know, uh, read it and uh, study the, re you know, study the test. And I prayed um, during that time, um, believing God because um, they wanted to double check to make sure everything was okay because I have uh, a sister that died with cancer from thyroid and I have three, two other sisters that had surgery on theirs and then a niece of the one that died, she had surgery on hers. So during that time, I was believing the Lord and, you know, praying and everything. And when it came back from California, they said everything was fine. It was uh, negative. And uh, about two months ago, my regular doctor moved away and this doctor came on board and she, I had an appointment with her. I went into her office and she, the first thing she said was, um, after examining your report, I, I would like to talk to you about surgery. I said, what? She said, um, yes, you know, she gave the long story. She don't even know my name, mm. ever huh. met me. But the first thing she started talking about was surgery. So um, at, after that, I, I, he said, well, okay, call me, let me know. But once I walked out of her office, I, I kicked the dust off my feet. And uh, <laughs> I called out testimony against her, but um, no surgery. But come to find out, I got a call from my, um, you know, cardiology last week. And they said, whatever you're doing, continue to do it. Your blood work is fine. Your your thyroids are working good, and uh, whatever you're doing, continue. Jesus, to do. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, praise God. Thank you, Mother. Thank you for sharing that, and welcome. We are thankful that you're in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> amen. amen. Yes, uh, thank God. You've been praise a blessing God. to our city. Yes. And to uh, and to manifest in me and to oh, freedom yeah. reign mm -hmm. and to all of Columbus. Yes, so and we, Apostle Lacrete ha helped uh, with her prayers and everything and coming together in corporate prayer. She helped get some of the prostitutes and the and the uh, criminals off the street here on the South Side. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise awesome. God. Well, we're going to uh, close out. Um, I, uh, 
I was going to give you the seven points of calling on the name of the Lord, but I'm, I'm going to save them to next week and we'll get more into what it looks like when we come together in prayer meetings to call on the name of the Lord. Uh, that is what that is. It's a prayer meeting. It's calling on the name of the Lord to be delivered or spared or rescued. It's, it's actually solemn assemblies of prayer. And, uh, and I will share more on that next week. And I will uh, pray you out and then I'll hand, uh, hand it back over to Prophet Shatisha. Now, Father, I thank you uh, for solemn assemblies of prayer as the basis of keeping us, covering us, protecting us, from judgment that's released in the earth, connected to the coming great and terrible day of the Lord. Lord, we recognize that there are progressive and um, ex uh, 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 expedient or progressive and continual uh, uh, birth pains and judgments that are coming as we get closer and closer to the day of the Lord. We thank you that you keep us. You bless us. You make your face shine upon us. You're gracious unto us. You lift up your countenance upon us. You give us peace. We thank you that this is a solemn assembly of prayer. Yes. This gathering manifests in me. Uh, this gathering, uh, Jesus, the miraculous one, uh, uh, these uh, uh, ladies and, and, and this anointing is a covering and a deliverance and a sparing or rescuing of this group from any judgment, any sickness or disease that would happen uh, uh, in the earth and in this uh, time and season. Lord, we thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for it. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm, bless Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. I was telling uh, Pastor Derek how I look, um, I, you know, when I look forward to these, uh, um, how can I say when when the classes start? You know that seven p.m. time. <laughs> Amen. It's, a, it's just really good and exciting to be a part of this this school, and um, just looking for great things to happen. So thank God for all of you to uh, that join on tonight.